Welcome back everyone to yet another episode and in today's video we'll be taking a look at a pair of unlined Belgian loafers by Colin Courparé. Coming up! How's it going my friends? We're back with yet another shoe review and a new style and a brand that I always wanted to talk about. Another French brand that is called Colenco Paris and it's a, it's a brand that was established by Alexis Lafont uh, who essentially is not just a shoemaker, he's also an artist as you will see. And I had the pleasure of uh, having an interview with him on Mystery Academy uh, of over a year ago uh, and I'll leave it in the uh, comment section or in the description down below uh, so you can read it and learn more about him and the whole idea behind Colenco uh, that has already a very special and unique name that's etched in the history uh, of, uh, of France as a nation and it, it is a great homage to the actual company and the ideas that Alexis is trying to bring in a very saturated industry. Uh, is specifically, Colincourt uh, has a, a very unique styling aesthetic, uh, a bit more modern, I would say. Uh, they are heavily focused, such as other French brands, in patina and handwork and bold colors, uh, which I really like in the styling. They also have a more modern approach and you can easily identify their shoes when you start looking at them, which is uh, great. They have their own identity and passion behind them. And uh, generally it was a brand that I wanted to, to explore uh, all after I found about them, uh, you know, in the past few years of my shoe collecting. And in their different ranges, uh, it really depends what they are making, uh, because a lot of their shoes are constructed by the Blake construction, some others are Goodyear welted, for example, some others are Storm welted. And my interview with Alexis, we talked a lot about construction and the quality of the construction does matter a lot. Uh, you can see that, for example, with uh, Aubercy, that uh, mostly makes Blake stitch shoes, but they are absolutely phenomenal and better than, you know, your average Goodyear welted shoe. And what Alexis is trying also to tell me is that each shoe uh, you know, during its conception and during uh, when you make it and why you make it, you also have to apply the proper construction. So if you're making a pair of unlined loafers like these, of course, uh, why not make them a very lightweight and comfortable and uh, give them a blade construction so they are easy to break in and they feel lightweight and, and lovely to wear. Uh, or why would you do that when you're making a winter boot? You would apply a more heavy, interesting construction there. So uh, that was a very interesting discussion we had, but today's video is all about these online Belgian loafers, uh, which is actually my first really, my first loafers in many, many years. Uh, it's a style I generally did not like, but after I moved to Italy and everything is so hot here during the summer, I really found out that I don't wanna just be wearing sneakers. And the ultimate style for summer is a pair of loafers. And I don't like the look of penny loafers, so I'm like, you know what, Belgian loafers, they look simplistic, they look nice, uh, why not? Especially unlined, it's perfect for here. So we're gonna go straight to the close-up and uh, we're gonna talk about everything I can, which is the leather, the construction, how it feels, and uh, generally give you a nice close look at the whole shoes. And then we will, of course, after the close-up, talk about you know the availability, the pricing, the sizing, uh, because it's a little more special, and generally my thoughts, how to style them, and anything else I can come up with and uh, you know make some conclusions about it. So, without further ado, let's go to the close-up now. All right. So let's begin by talking quickly about the box. Uh, as you can see, the box here it's uh, gonna quite simple and with a really nice uh, blue branded logo on the top. Yeah, all the basic stuff that you need to know, so you know, such as the model, the sizing, etc. And that's about it. Uh, it arrived also very quickly with uh, DHL from uh, from France in Italy. It was like maybe one day, which is always nice. Uh, inside, since I think this is a lower range in a way, uh, it is a more Spartan uh, unboxing experience, which is, to be fair, it's totally fine. 
Uh, the only thing that I don't like so much is that you only get one shoe bag. It's quite big, but I'm not a fan if I'm gonna keep both of my shoes in here in case, you know, they scratch or they move around. Other than that, there's some, you know, paperwork and of course you get uh, some uh, tissue paper that goes inside the shoes to keep them shape. But pretty much that's just it. Uh, if you had a different unboxing experience, let me know, but I do know from the higher ranges that uh, some of my friends have tried that the unboxing experience is much more luxurious there. But this is the basic box for this range at least. And now let's talk about the star of the show, which is the actual shoes. Uh, so first of all, let's talk about uh, what uh, this is. So this is what we would call a Belgian loafer. Uh, it's essentially a slip-on, it's a loafer. You can see that there's no lacing and it's quite simplistic. It's easily identifiable. Uh, it doesn't have like the penny loafer strap or tassels here. It has a very unique, recognizable apron at the front. Like a, a bit like an oval shape, and the original ones have a small bow tie or something similar like that. I really like it. It's a very simplistic, nice design. I don't like how penny loafers look on my feet. Uh, however, these ones, uh, I felt they look much nicer, and uh, it generally has a very low profile, as you can see, and that also helps that the sole, because it's also plaque stitch, is a bit uh, thinner, and also the height of the heel, instead of the usual uh, one inch or uh, two and a half centimeters, it's around, I would say, two, so a little less than an inch, and that's uh, totally appropriate for this specific model. Uh, now, about the actual a shoe, uh, as I will talk about later, it's also available in different colors and all different configurations. Uh, this particular one is called uh, Cognac Suede. Uh, it is a bit of, uh, I would say, a mid to lighter tan, sort of brown suede. Uh, it's still, it's quite versatile and it feels really nice to the touch. It's quite soft. Uh, it has a short nap, which actually is generally pretty good for suede. And, and you can see how it changes color every time you brush your finger, you know, different way from the other side of the suede. It's a mark of a good suede. The suede comes from the Sharada uh, tannery, which is in Italy, as far as I'm aware. And another unique feature of this uh, model is that, as you can see, it's very pliable here in the sides and the front sides. Uh, that's because it's unlined. It's hard to show you on camera, but you can see that there is pieces missing at the lining part here and that's because the whole idea of the shoe is to be lightweight and to be in direct contact with the skin and uh, to offer this kind of experience and this is perfect for loafers. Uh, if you touch them you will still feel sort of the stiffener and the toe puff that is here to give structure to the toe shape and also at the back to keep it from cracking and give it shape and structure but the rest of the shoe is quite pliable and uh, flexible. And also this is a black construction. Uh, eventually in a future video we'll talk about constructions more and actually show you what everything looks like. Uh, but in a black construction there is no weld, there is no midsole, there is only the outsole which is stitched directly at the inner part of the shoe. So that's what uh, makes it so lightweight and comfortable. However, it's not very waterproof. A uh, very interesting thing that I found uh, is that they actually have a, you know, a full insole inside and also it's, I cannot show you, there is some foamy material like a blue-green inside uh, but uh, I asked and uh, the only reason for that is pretty much for, uh, for adding some extra layer of comfort into the shoes. And that's about it. Uh, stylistically there's not much going on. Uh, there is the stitches here at the apron. There is uh, a, big, a bit of a calf piece holding the lining together and just overlapping it uh, here around the shoe. Uh, there is just your basic back shim at the back. And overall everything looks quite tidy for uh, the price point. Uh, I'm just looking for you know any kind of defects or something that I can find. Uh, there are some areas around the sole which you can see uh, you, how it's black stitched here. and. Uh, it also has a piece of uh, rubber for the top lips as well here. Uh, everything looks pretty okay. Uh, there is uh, some parts of the stitching that uh, are sticking out a bit uh, at the backstitch level, uh, but uh, it's 
not uh, definitely not a problem and I think they will uh, disappear as, uh, uh, as as you walk and as you wear them um, it, uh, you know it has it has some nuances it's not perfect nor should you be at this price point but overall I would say that it's uh, pretty well pretty well made and as about the the shape of the shoe uh, you can you can already see how the last looks like uh, I would say it's a bit of a medium around it also the apron accentuates that you can see it from this side as well how it looks uh, this is called well I think it's called the ocean 12 last even though at uh, the box it says 037 in any case it's an elegant last I think it matches the profile and the aesthetics of the shoe pretty well as you can see both of them look pretty nice and stylish uh, especially with textured clothes and linen I think it will look great uh, before we move on, I think I just need to quickly show you the shoe trees that I received as well. So the shoe trees are uh, generally nice, uh, they're not very lightweight, uh, they have a spring mechanism, uh, they have a nice handle, they have silver colors instead of brass, which I actually prefer, and it has the company logo stamped on here. Um, the only thing that I don't like is that uh, while on the left shoe it actually works pretty well. Uh, the left one that came, uh, the spring mechanism is kind of stiff, so you really had to work with it, but I think it's just this particular pair. It works well, it does its job, uh, like, I don't really mind. Uh, but, uh, you know, even regular shoe trees will, will work well, but you might as well invest in, uh, in a pair of shoe trees just off the bat. And I would say that's about it for the close-up and I think it's time for us to move on uh, to the conclusions. And that was it for the close-up. Uh, I think uh, we touched upon uh, everything. Uh, I give you a nice look, an overview of uh, you know, the leather, the, the, the feel and uh, all the details of the shoes. Generally they're quite uh, well made, they feel nice to hold, uh, they're quite lightweight. Uh, it's nice that I, I do have the shoe trees now because initially they forgot to send them to me and uh, everything checks out uh, it's uh, especially competitive for for the price uh, which uh, was if I if I'm not mistaken was about 300 US for a, a shoe with this type of quality in leather a nice construction and as you will see a, a great fit and overall feel and overall thoughtfulness in the design and uh, uh, the, the passion and the identity that comes uh, from Colencourt and brands like Colencourt, uh, I think it, I think it's worth it. Uh, there is no point arguing. Oh no, these are Blake and they're overpriced. So I should not pay 300 US for it. Uh, it's perfectly acceptable for this price point, and it's very very smart and suitable for what it's trying to be: a lightweight summer comfortable, easy to wear shoe. And uh, honestly, wearing this is it's like you're you're wearing sneakers. It's it's great. I do like the online construction very much. Uh, it's it really feels that like your your foot is in direct contact with the leather. You know, so it's like skin against skin in most areas. Uh, also, it's very soft and pliable in these areas, especially even at the at the front and the sides. So it can feel a bit comfier. I just want to see how the leather will uh, evolve and last uh, as I use them more and more. Uh, because it's my first experience with uh, online construction, essentially. And uh, overall, uh, that's about it. Uh, and availability, essentially, Colencourt has their own website and they do their own their own thing. So the only way to, to get uh, the, this loafer, which is called the Kataka, by the way, uh, it's uh, through their own website. Uh, luckily, uh, you, you can get this particular shoe not only in this beautiful cognac suede, uh, you can get it in other colors or you can even uh, made to order it and make it by color. You can use exotic materials and the price of course increases or changes. And uh, you know, the sky's the limit. And this is this is one of the things I like about Colenco that they don't just mass produce everything in one place. So when they're making loafers with a blade construction, they will, for example, let's say look for the best possible place in Italy, or if they're making maybe a, you know a specific country boot, uh, they would go into England because they do it best. And some shoes maybe they would make in Spain, etc. So they will look for the appropriate people 
to do the appropriate construction and build quality. Uh, and I, I think that's great. Uh, overall, the quality of this shoe is uh, is pretty good. Uh, this uh, probably is not their, you know, the to top range, and uh, which comes with a more exclusive box experience as well. But overall, for for what is uh, about three hundred give or take US, is I think it's phenomenal, and uh, I think you will be very happy. Uh, trying something like this and trying a new brand. Generally, I found with most of the French brands that uh, they, they offer something unique and something lovely and uh, uh, generally that their, their shoes have real identity and I, I like this very, very much. And this was a brand, like I said, that I wanted to try for a long time. Now, when it comes to styling, as you will see, uh, I'm quite casual now and I've been looking for something that I can wear with uh, shorts or uh, some linen trousers I recently got from uh, Lanieri and I will be reviewing. Uh, as well as this uh, very, very nice light blue uh, linen polo shirt that I got from uh, Luca Faloni and will probably be the next video review. And uh, it's a very easy shoe to wear. Uh, first of all, because of the color and secondly, because uh, it's uh, so summery and the color is so versatile that you can wear it with everything. If you're in Italy, for example, like I am, and you're in 95, 100 Fahrenheit or like 30, 35 uh, degrees, and you, you pretty much, your only option is shorts or linen because everything else is way too hot. So these will fit perfectly. Uh, for example, what I'm wearing right now with some really nice uh, pleated dark brown or mid brown uh, uh, linen shorts, uh, for example, or some, uh, some lovely chinos in different linen colors like blue, like uh, beige, etc. So, very easy to wear, uh, very nice to look at, uh, very nice to, to fit uh, because uh, of the online construction. And talking about fit, let's quickly touch upon that. Of course, it varies for every person, but generally uh, the advice is to size down half. Uh, first, because they are loafers, secondly, because they are online, and generally because you want a nice, snugger, tighter fit in these. And uh, for me, which my usual is a UK 8, or a US 9D, uh, I took a size 41 and a half or equivalent at UK 7 and a half, so half a size down from my regular UK. And uh, overall the fit is really good, uh, it fits quite snug. Uh, I will avoid quite thick socks with these, I mean, there's no point, either no sock socks or uh, no socks at all if you're more uh, adventurous. Uh, the only thing that I should mention is that because of the construction and how these shoes are, they're supposed to fit quite uh, like a glove, you would say. So that means that uh, your whole foot will be pretty much in contact with with the actual shoe. And that includes the front. The front is quite uh, short, I would say. And uh, my, while I'm walking or while I'm wearing them, the front part of my toes, they're almost touching you know, the front of the shoe. So don't expect much space uh, like in the front. Uh, it's totally fine. They're supposed to fit that way. Uh, but be aware and of course reach out to the retailer if you're looking for specific advice or uh, you're looking to learn more about the shoes. Now uh, that's about it. Uh, I'm uh, very happy that I got a new pair of shoes that I can actually wear and use often. I'm looking very forward to putting them into use and I do look forward to trying their uh, upgraded range in the future uh, and probably their made to order system. Um, I hope you like them too. I hope that uh, you can give Colenco Paris uh, a chance. Uh, go check out their website, uh, follow them on Instagram. Uh, they're very pleasant to talk with. Uh, sometimes they even have some sales of some outgoing models. And uh, they have a very nice set of lifestyle and uh, you know, images and scenes that show you how it is in the real world, very artistic. And also for the fans of sneakers and more fancy high top uh, sneakers and trainers, they also have that. Uh, as well as a few more uh, special accessories uh, like uh, hats or some kind of uh, uh, safari style jackets uh, in collaborations with different brands. So it's a, it's a very artistic but quality focused company and I like that very much. And uh, I would like to hear your thoughts in the comments. Of course, if you're new to the channel, please uh, subscribe, uh, leave a like, uh, press the notification button, share this video and let me know what you think in the comments down below. And I will see you in the next video. But before we go, uh, let's have and say a really nice or well bad dad joke of the week. 
So yesterday I dreamt about the muffler and today unfortunately I woke up exhausted. <laughs> that was pretty bad, that was really bad. Uh, thank you, thank you for uh, sharing your bad dad jokes with me and uh, keep uh, sending them so we can maybe future at this part of the video. Uh, until next time, uh, stay dapper, stay cool and I'll see you in the next one. Bye! Thank mm -hmm. you.